Good morning, everyone. It's May 24th, Sunday morning. It's a cloudy day outside, but it's a nice day. Uh, I just wish uh, things would get back to normal somewhat, but uh, for right now, uh, things are slowly opening up because of COVID, but uh, I, I pray that uh, you're all safe and feeling well. But today I want to talk about uh, jogging or going for a run. You know, when it comes to exercise or running, some people prefer to run and they relieve stress that way, they burn calories. And for some people, they really enjoy running. On my way here to the church this morning, a man was running down the street. He looked like he was in a lot of pain, but he was still doing it. You know, I don't understand the people who get up before the sun gets up and they go for a run before work. They are the people who sign up for a five or a 10K marathon because they want to. For them, running is an essential part of their life. And maybe some of you love to run. But then there are people who are like me. When we hear the word running, I'd immediately think of a million other things more enjoyable to do. Running has always been my least favorite activity. The only other activity that I, can, that I think is less painful might be banging my head against the wall. Or maybe I would run if someone was chasing me but I suspect I would only get less than 100 feet and fall on my face. So generally, it's people either love running or they hate it. And I personally am not one who loves running. Now, don't get me wrong. I admire people who run. When I see people running down the street in their uh, running clothes and just a nice pace going, I, I get envious that I would love to be able to do that. Because, But I don't. I don't go out and run. And I know it's a hard thing to do. And while I may understand why someone would run 26 miles, I'm not sure why they would run for fun. But I do understand one aspect of running that's appealing. You see, running isn't complicated. You don't have to go to a gym and do all kinds of special weights and, and exercises and, and, and things like that. All you do is put on your shoes, hit the road, and just go. Now, there's more to uh, running, I know, than uh, just putting shoes on. There's proper breathing, there's pace that you have to keep, and other things. But basically, it's just simply putting one foot in front of the other and moving faster. The runner's goal is always clear, isn't it? They want to cross the finish line. And the finish line might be uh, an actual finish line, or it could be just doing their best time. They run for two miles, and they might do it in under... Uh, 20 minutes, let's say. And so in tomorrow they'll run, they want to do it in, in a better time again. And that's it. Success is, is easy to measure for them. And I think that's the kind that's kind of nice because we all know most of us, for us, our life doesn't work that way. But how do you how do we measure success in our own lives, especially during or even uh, during this current uh, world situation with COVID-19, where, where is success? People have laid out, been laid off for work. Uh, restaurants are closed down. We have to stay home and isolated. We can't do the things we once did. We can't really go to the parks and gather together with family and friends. But think about our families then. They all want or need different things from us, especially right now, because unlike a runner, we don't have a clear finish line. And plus, the finish line for COVID-19 seems to keep moving further and further down the road. Well, sure, we're slowly opening up things, but that's going to take a long time. And uh, when will we ever go back into a restaurant and sit down and have a good meal? When will we be able to gather again in the church? You see, it's all very complicated. And this is, is making our life seem, doesn't making our life not seem very normal. And it seems elusive. So we just keep trying and hoping to keep up. And eventually we hope people in charge will get to where, uh, where we need to be and to keep us safe. For me, being in isolation with my wife is one thing. But as a pastor, what does that look like in my faith or how I do my job? What does that look like in how we do church or how we come together as a body of believers? What does that look like as we uh, come together or online? It's all a little different, isn't it? What does God really want in my walk with him? What does God really want from us? 
How do we stay connected to Jesus in these challenging times? Here's some of the future things I wonder about. When life gets back to where we can gather together again and return to church Sunday church services, what will that look like? Will we, will we be able to gather in groups of more than 50? Sometimes we have 60 or 70 people in our church. Will we have to cut that back? What restrictions will that cause us? It's interesting that when churches started several weeks ago having their messages and services online, people initially watched. There was a big influx of online watching. After all, it was a new thing. But now as many people tune into online now, many people don't tune into the online services. Every week, less and less people watch church online. And so this uh, form of connection is not working as often or as well as it should. Because it's easy just to flick me off and to go watch TV or do something different. You can't do that if you're sitting in a church service for an hour. Sure, you get up and walk out, but we see you do that. So when will life go back to normal? We want to do our best in our life, but how do we do that in our current situation? We also want to be best with our family and the things we need to do. We want to have a strong faith, but we might question where God is in all of this. How do we begin to understand our faith when the finish line keeps moving and seems so unattainable? It can make us feel defeated in our faith. After all, for some people, there's nothing, nothing left in their lives that matters, and there seems no way to win. Maybe you can't see the finish line in the race you're running. I have two friends and my wife who are currently going through brain cancer treatment, and it is difficult not only for my wife and I and my family, but for their wives and their families. What does their running look like in their life? I have another friend whose marriage is having a difficult time, and he wonders how he let it get so bad. And he wonders how he can get it back to where it was, where it, where it should be healthy and whole again. Maybe you're going through something right now and you feel alone and isolated. Maybe this COVID situation from our family and friends has only caused grief in your life. I think it's important to know you're not alone. Not only alone in uh, worshiping God and feeling isolated from Him, but you're not alone. We are all going through challenging times. And the truth is, anyone who has spent time walking with God has probably reached a point where they've gone, grown tired of running. We get worn out, weary, and just plain overwhelmed, the feeling that we'll never get to the finish line, let alone win. Maybe you think you'll never measure up to what God wants you to do. So instead of continuing to run, sometimes we easily give up the race altogether. But is that what God wants from us? To make our life and faith feel like a marathon where no one can win? to make chasing him so exhausting that most of us eventually give up? Or is it possible that God wants something totally different from us? The reality is we want to follow Jesus, but we can't get caught up in just wanting to please God. We want to get things just right for him. We want to work hard to be deserving of his love and presence. We want to make our lives the perfect place that's hospitable to a perfect God. We try to make things perfect, we, to make ourselves perfect. In other words, our goal is to have the right behavior. But the problem is sometimes we're chasing performance. We say things like, if only I do this, then it will be better. But Jesus tells us that it's not about getting it right. It's simply about being with him. In other words, chasing Jesus means not chasing after performance. There's a story in Luke, in Luke 10, about Mary and Martha. And if you don't know it, please look it up. And I'm going to re refer to it just slightly here. The story is that Jesus was coming to her home for dinner. And when Jesus arrived, Martha was doing all the work in the kitchen, cooking the food and getting it ready. And her sister Mary 
wasn't participating and helping her. She just sat and listened to Jesus. So Martha had enough of Mary's behavior. After all, she was working hard. So she went to Jesus and said, look, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. I think, of all, I think all of us can relate here to Martha. None of us likes feeling we're on the unfair end of things. But look at his response to her. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus said the exact opposite of what Martha probably expected him to say. Jesus to told her that her sister was actually the one getting the whole thing right. In his eyes, Mary was the one running after the right things. She was running after a relationship with Jesus. You see, Mary understood that Martha, what Martha didn't, and that is, we don't work for Jesus' love. He just wants us to be with him. We are not running the race to appease God. We're not running this race because if we don't, he won't love us. We're running this race because we want to be with Jesus. Yet we need to understand that Jesus isn't saying that things like hard work and goals are bad. He isn't saying we will never have to face the hills and valleys in our life. You see, those struggles are actually important because they are valuable parts of growing our faith. When we face an uncertain marriage, we put our trust in him and it builds our faith. When we're going through uh, cancer treatments, we put our faith in him and uh, in our struggles because it helps us to grow in our faith. That's why Jesus is not telling us to just throw away responsibility or toss out all the commands he's given us or just opt to go crazy and sin as much as possible. He doesn't want that to happen. What he is saying is that when it comes to our relationship with him, things like working harder, performing better, and striving for perfection are not how we reach the finish line. Perfect performance isn't something we have to chase because it's not something God requires of us. It's not about chasing after a set of rules or goals or expectations. The point is to chase after Jesus. The ultimate prize in this race is simply a relationship with him. It's about him, not about all the work we do for him. Yet sometimes we get caught up thinking we do, the, the more we do, the more God loves us. But here's the truth. God, God's love for us is based on his decision to love us despite our performance. God's unconditional love is the basis of our relationship with him. And that love is never connected to how much we do or, de or deserve or earn. Which means that chasing Jesus means not chasing performance. And what does that mean for us today? Well, maybe we need to stop running so hard. After all, we don't have to worry about falling behind or keeping up. We can stop feeling guilty or keeping our distance from God when we mess up. Because sometimes that happens. We, we do stupid things. We make a sinful, um, do sinful things in our life. And we turn from God because we feel embarrassed. And we keep our distance from him. You know, we don't also don't have to be exhausted or overwhelmed with concerns about how God feels about us. God's disappointed in me. God doesn't want to be with me. Th those are not true. We don't have to face all the challenges and difficulties in life alone. We can simply rest in him. We can spend time with him. And when we do, we can know that we're chasing the right thing. We're chasing a relationship. And a relationship begins when we begin to learn and know about God in our life. So this week, spend time with Jesus and build your relationship with him above everything else. No, we don't have to be perfect before Jesus will spend time with us. We don't have to get our lives in order before he'll meet with us. We don't have to have it all right to be right with Jesus. We just have to show up. Jesus welcomes all of us right now just the way we are with our sickness with our broken marriages 
with the hurt we feel from loss of jobs, from hurt, hurt from feeling from isolated from others, and when we're going through sickness and disease. He is with us, and he'll take us just as we are. Because he wants to be close to us now. And there's nothing we have to do, no race we have to run in order to get there. We just have to sit down and open ourselves up to him. We just have to be present in his presence. This is incredibly good news because following Jesus is easier than you think. He isn't running and telling us to catch up. He isn't waiting at the imaginary finish line. No, he's running with you and he's running toward you. We should all strive to do good things and serve others and develop habits that grow our relationship with Jesus. We'll never grow in our faith or in our lives if we stay the same. But as we do, we can also be free to know that none of those things are a requirement to have a relationship with Christ. None of it will keep us from him. He's already with us. And when it comes to chasing Jesus, perfect performance isn't required. And for those of you this morning who don't know Christ in your life, who haven't got Christ in your life, just simply ask him to come into your life and help you to do better. Forgive your sins and you will be saved. And you can have that relationship with an awesome God. I pray this morning that if you feel lost or lonely or hurting, that you reach out. You can leave a like on this Facebook page or leave a comment if you'd like. I appreciate it. And if uh, you want to have a, if you have a question or a concern, just message me privately and I'll get back to you and try to help you along. I just pray now that uh, you find peace and grace in today and the days ahead. Just let me have a prayer with you if I could. Let me pray. Father God, I just ask you to be with those who are listening. Um, each and every one of us has a difficult time in our life. And so we give it all to you. We know that you are a great God. You're the only God who can help us through our circumstances. We ask, Lord, that you help us to be patient, help us to be faithful, and help us just to sit and uh, develop our relationship with Christ, your Son. I pray that you don't help. I pray that you would uh, take away the ideas of performance and the work we have to do to have a relationship with you, because we know that you are there for us in all things. I pray you just give us your blessing, your grace, and your love. I pray all this and more in Christ's name. Amen. Now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace today and tomorrow and forever. In Christ's name. Amen. Have a great day. And again, uh, put a like or uh, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it very much. God bless.